Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Welcome to Magical Midlife today. I am so very excited to welcome my first ever guest. I have got Jen Reitmeyer from Baked by Jenny with me today. So hi there, Jenny. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. Oh, it's my pleasure. I uh, am very honored to be here as well. It's uh, it's quite the thrill. And my first guest. I know. (laughs) And this is my first podcast too. So it's like a win-win all around, I think. That's super cool. Love yeah. that. You're in the hot seat today. I know. <laughs> and well, one of the reasons that I have been so inspired by you over the last, because we've known each other probably three years we met, I think, at the farmer's market. Yep. And then yep, over the yep. last year, you have been sending out emails through your business, Baked by Jenny, which obviously we're going to come talk yes. about through your business and they have been constantly uplifting inspirational motivational and that's really why I wanted to talk to you about your different perspective on you know on where we are right now yeah yeah but I don't just want to focus on COVID because otherwise that's pretty dull for everybody because that's all we're hearing about anyway but as I say that was a real testament to how you are and your mindset and what you bring to life oh well thank you yeah you're so welcome thank you my goodness thank you (laughs) so first of all can we find out a little bit about you tell us just a little bit about you know your how many kids you have do you have any pets tell us a bit about that Jen Sure. Uh, so, well, we live in a small town um, north of Toronto uh, called Queensville. Um, and uh, I have, we've got two kids, uh, Jack, who is 12, and Hannah, who is 10. Uh, and my lovely husband of coming up on 14 years, uh, Mike. Um, and uh, what else? Can I, I'm, I'm a fairly outdoorsy, creative sporty expressive possibly at times uh person um we have chickens in our backyard uh that sort of covers it for pets (laughs) at the moment (laughs) which my husband says is just enough (laughs) to do to to do chickens but yeah what else what else you want to know okay so i can I'll start asking. Don't you worry. Be careful what you okay. ask for, because I'll get into questions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Your business is baked by Jenny. Um, mm-hmm. So what I'm really interested in is I assume you didn't leave school and say, oh, wow, I want to start my business called Baked by Jenny. Yeah, no, no. 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 So tell no, us how you so, got to here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so interesting, right? So um, so I had like uh, almost a 20 year career uh, raising money. That was my um, that was my thing. And I led huge budget, you know, thousands of people level size of events, fundraising events, walks and runs and or gala dinners. I mean, I did like all of it. But anyway, so when I was home, when I had the kids, I, a friend of mine actually uh, at the time had started a a catering business. Um, Her name is Marie. And she would get so busy that she would call me up and be like, can you, I need you to bake some stuff for me. Cause she knew I was good in the kitchen. Uh, And I've always kind of been good in the kitchen. I I wouldn't, I'm not necessarily a foodie person per se, but I think it's the, it's the creativity outlet for me that um, kind of the kitchen sort of is like a wonderful vehicle for me. So that's kind of, and I just sort of got good at it, whether it was baking or cooking or whatever um, over time. So anyway, so I'd be off with the kids, you know, on maternity leave or whatever. They were really little. And, uh, you know, next thing I know is baking like, you know, six loaves of, you know, lemon blueberry cake and all these four different kinds of cookies. And, you know, and then I was meeting my girlfriend Marie, like out on the highway, and she would like, you know, pick up all this baking and take it into the city where she had some like massive event 
uh, going on that, of course, she was so busy, she just didn't have a t- uh, the time to like do all that kind of baking. And that ended up morphing into she would say to me like I need to tell people like where this has come from like who are you like I need can we say this is like baked by Jenny and she used to call me Jenny actually I have a handful of friends that that will that naturally just always call me Jenny so that's kind of where baked by Jenny originated and uh and then I guess I would go and work with her at some of her big events and things like on the weekends and, you know, whatever, just because I I found it thrilling, you know, like just to be with different groups of people. And I would see all these different venues down in Toronto and, and it was so creative. And she often would, you know, throw me in the kitchen and I would be prepping and cooking and, you know, helping her put together these like massive dinners and buffets and you know or desserts I mean she had me make like desserts for a wedding one time which I just I'll never forget that and she was no no I need you Jenny I need you I, this is what I need you to do and I need it to be this and Lola and go figure it out and I'd be like okay and I would go and I would do it and uh, anyway so and then so that was sort of it was a bit of a part-time gig I guess if you could call it that And then about four years ago, working in uh, a fundraising department, it was a smaller department that I uh, kind of led at the time. And my boss actually was the president and CEO of this charity, this not-for-profit that I was working for, who I absolutely adored and loved. And she was brilliant. And she was a hard ass too, but brilliant, you know, brilliant mind. And, uh, and I love that. And she ended up getting let go by the board of directors. And I was so devastated. And they brought in sort of this temporary person that, you know, her background was finance. I, they're just, she was not a very outside the box kind of a thinking person. Her, her management style wasn't really, anyway, it didn't work for me. And very quickly, it was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? You know, I just I didn't I did not enjoy going to work anymore because all the things in the space and the opportunity, everything that I kind of was growing under just was squashed. And so the so, you know, it's interesting that, you know, sometimes and I do believe this, that like the universe can kind of put conditions in your life that make it easy to make those decisions, right? Like to move on. And uh, and I also remember at the time that, because you know, similarly, because the kids were probably, uh, they might have been seven, kind of eight, nine in there. And my husband traveled a lot for his job. So here I was, you know, paying a fortune for after school care. They were in all kinds of extracurricular activities. My husband was gone, you know, two nights a week generally. Um, And I was working in this like nine to five office job that was suffocating. And I was like, what am I doing? And then also too, I, I noticed that I was even having a hard time putting good food on the table for my kids and my husband. And because I didn't have the time, I wasn't inspired. And I just felt like I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off with like no direction. And, you know, it was all execution all the time. And I, there was no space kind of in there for me. And I just thought, oh my God, like, I just, I don't know that this is what I want my life to be like, like, is like, maybe it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah. And uh, anyway, and, you know, like my father um, was a business owner uh, and uh, he, you know, had a wonderful sort of rag to riches kind of a story where, you know, he purchased a fledgling business uh, just north of us in the next big town up Barry, And, you know, through time and hard work, you know, turn it into this like massive, incredible success And so I always kind of had that in the back of my mind of like, one of the things I wanted to do in my life was like to experience that as to start a business of some kind. And I didn't really know what it was or how the, how I would, I didn't go to business school, 
you know, I, but I just thought like, oh my gosh, like maybe this is it. Like maybe this is my moment that I'm going to just jump off this cliff because staying on the cliff at the right now is brutal. Like I, what am I doing? Right. So, so that's where Baked by Jenny kind of got launched. And I literally, I quit my job <laughs> and, you know, within a couple of months, I was a vendor in the East Gullenbury Farmer's Market. And, you know, and it was very, and that, you know, I saw the Farmer's Market, of course, as strategically, it was a way of recruiting a following and figuring out what people would buy and how much would they pay for that. And, you know, and, and, and it like the, you know, it was just a wonderful, like, okay, let's just go like figure it out of like, you know, because at the time I didn't really 100% know what was going to stick, but I did know that my interests were, I knew that I had the skills in the kitchen to create whatever this was going to be that I could fill a niche thing and, you know, because it started actually as there were so many other parents out there. I saw them, you know, at hockey practice and swimming lessons and whatever. Everyone's running around like a chicken with their head cut off and no one's and they're living on McDonald's and all that kind of thing. And I Mm -hmm. thought, oh my God, like maybe I could be the guy that helps people not do that. And so, and that actually was, that was a really good niche at the time because really, I mean, and it's amazing how much working style has sort of morphed even you know in the last four years where now it's like people are working from home they've got more flexible hours I mean and COVID's just sort of like washed the whole office thing like right off the map for, you know so but I mean I've evolved with that those times too right because I mean we all have had to do that but um, I just knew that cooking and baking was something like I knew that was a good vehicle for me where I could craft a life around that for myself that made me feel like more balanced as a person that I would have more flexibility in my day that I could sort of be more in control of like okay if I have a window here yeah I can go run 5k before I dive into whatever my next thing is yeah um you know way more space for my children you know because that was actually a very big motivator for me when it came to Big by Jenny um that I just I wanted to be a better mom I just I that was a big thing I didn't feel like I was doing the mom thing very well at the time and that was yeah so let me ask you a question would you, yeah. if, if you hadn't have had that change of boss, yeah, would you still have made the jump? I think eventually, yes. I don't think it would have been as immediate um, because I think that fear, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. I mean, taking a risk is laced with fear because you just don't know. Like, yeah, what, you never know. You know, are you going to... F- are you going to fail? Maybe Hmm. you'll fail, you know, and then what, and then what does that say about you? So it probably like, certainly the, the change in leadership was a big catalyst, I would say for Hmm. me. And, and that those conditions helped me, that was worse than facing the fear. So staying in that was worse than facing the fear. Right. So for me, that's kind of how it worked. But I think, you know, like eventually I would have done it anyway, because I, you know, I tried to lead my life by, okay, what are the things that I want to accomplish in my life? And I kind of have this, like this list of, it's not a hard copy list or whatever, but I just think there's, you know, you're only on the planet for so long. So it's like, if you're going to do it, let's just get over it and do it already and just see what happens right like there is there is a piece of me that's kind of like okay it's okay to throw caution to the wind as long as it's an educated researched uh kind of decision right Mm -hmm. like take the fear the fear is going to be there but don't let that stop you from you know seeing what's on the other side 
And I do have moments where I get paralyzed. With I was going to say, is there any time that you look back and go, oh my goodness, what have I done? Yeah, all the time. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> all the, oh, sure. Yeah. When, I mean, what all sort the of things throw you off balance? So, well, I mean, relating to Big by Jenny and kind of what I've done. So, uh, you know, a year ago, oh, that was a year. It was right before Christmas, actually. And I landed one of the biggest sort of single jobs for Big by Jenny that I've ever had. And I got contacted by, there's like this um, seniors volunteer committee with, you know, the town where we, where we live. And I've been feeding a lot of senior aging people too. That's kind of like another whole uh, market that kind of opened up for me aside from mm-hmm. like busy families. Uh, I, I've fed a lot of, you know, aging people that are living on their own, but don't want to cook or, you know, are sick of cooking or, you know, whatever it is. So anyway, so I got contacted by this committee um, and they, now this was during COVID times, but they were running, it used to be kind of like a fair where um, an information fair where the seniors could go in to the local arena and there'd be tables all set up and here's all the services in the community. And, and, but they did it as a drive-by kind of an event but there was always a lunch that was included. And so anyway, they contacted me to do the lunch. Um, and it was a holiday. Uh, it was right. It was in December. Um, anyway, she said, well, you know, this is fantastic. And this is what we want. And it, you know, it was like, I did, you know, turkey sandwiches and cranberries and mincemeat, little mincemeat tarts. And it was just this cutest little thing. And uh, she originally asked um, that it would be about 75 people that I would be making lunches for. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, you know, no problem. I said, yeah, you know, just confirm the numbers like a week out and, you know, no problem, we'll do it. <laughs> a week out, she says, um, actually, it's kind of more like 140 people. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I guess I'm getting another turkey. Like, you know, like it's, that's a lot of turkey sandwiches, right? And, uh, which was a thrill. And, but then the fear, so this is kind of where, what happens to me is that, you know, I'm really great with the execution. I do all the planning. It looks great and the whatever and that, but then, and I get it all packed and, and then, I deliver it all and then they get all, they all, they're all getting set up and they got tents and the, you know, the flyers are all bagged and they're going to just hand everyone sort of the information and my lunch as like the car is driving through or whatever. And I drop it off and I get in my car and I come home and I crawl into bed. It's like maybe 11 o'clock sort of midweek or whatever. And I'm like paralyzed now with fear because I'm like, oh my God, because it's the vulnerability yeah. of the like, holy crap, look at what I've just done. And I know rationally it's beautiful and it looks amazing. And I've taken care with every of those 140 lunches, every single one I know has been packed and labeled and done to the nines with care. But then there's a piece that I was like, oh my God, this is a lot of people Mm. and it's my name what if they don't like it what if it's not (laughs) what they wanted what if the you know what if what if what what, you know and all these like doubts kind of you know like come into my mind or whatever anyway so you know about an hour later of course I get a phone call from the organizer they loved all of it you know it was all just this wonderful incredible thing you know and actually I still hear comments about that lunch that I did because there's a a senior's home um, in another neighboring town in Mount Albert that uh, there's a few residents in there that I bring meals to and of course they were like oh you were the one that did those turkey sandwiches (laughs) that was a great lunch I mean I still it's you know it's incredible the next day I even had another senior person who was at that lunch who she literally called me to say I just wanted you to know what a lovely incredible lunch 
that was that you put together. And she just like raved about it. I mean, I had That's never so met her. so cool. You know, and it was just, yeah. So it's, I think the fear is real for a lot of people. I think it's when you do something like, when you put yourself into your work in that kind of way, there is a, there's a vulnerability that there you is. just sort of have to swallow and live with and trust and know that what you're putting out there is good. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'm a hundred percent, a hundred percent there yet with the trust of all of that, but it's, it is something that I, face and just every so often and I just have to go okay like this is okay and here it is again and it's okay you know do you think you'll Um, ever be there 100% with the trust of everything is good and I've totally done the right thing and this is the best thing ever for me and my family well for you especially yeah I mean I don't think the I don't think the vulnerability and the fear that's connected to that. I don't think I'll ever a hundred percent be rid of that. I think that you like because I think that that is it's also a driver too for mm-hmm. me as, as far as quality and creativity and doing things to like a a, a level of standard that is excellent right because yeah. I, I mean to me those kind of go like hand in hand so I you know you can call me sort of an overachiever if you want a type whatever I have all of that I mean you know and I think that it's it's okay right like it bodes well for yeah you play with your strengths you know? yeah you play to your strengths totally and whatever your weaknesses are I think you just you learn to kind of incorporate them as best you can and just don't let them stand in the way of what you rationally know that you can do, Mm. you know? What's been the hardest part of getting to where you are today? The hardest part. And because that can be different for everybody. Yeah, I mean, so, okay, so the... The hardest book. Okay, this is going to sound a bit crazy, but go for it. I love that. It's I love it already. Go for it. (laughs) So okay, so letting go of the belief that you know. So as a as a female person, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we think we're supposed to be doing in order to be labeled successful as a parent, as a, you know, income earner. I think there's, I think a lot of people think that it needs to look a certain way. And, you know, for me, when I was in my twenties, so I'm 48 now. So, you know, I'm right in spring chicken, may I say, yeah. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm right in your midlife <laughs> thing here. Um, but anyway, I mean, when I was in my 20s, and I'm sure it was the same for you, there was kind of this like movement in, of empowerment for, I think, young women where it was like, you can have it all, you can yeah. do it all, you can have it all, have the family, have the babies, be a fantastic mother, climb the corporate ladder, um, what, all of it. And yeah. So what I found was that, and this is just for me, but I found that that actually wasn't doable in the way that made me an okay person. So like, what I mean by that is that, sure, I was a mom, you know, sure, I had like fantastic office jobs and corporate jobs and leadership jobs um, along the way. Um, I didn't find that after all of that, I was the person that I really kind of wanted to be, mm-hmm. which was, you know, present for my kids, um, you know, recognize, like really recognizing, like if there's, if they've got feelings about something, knowing and seeing the signs, which to me, if I was running around doing all the office work and, you know, I just, I wouldn't have had the space to see that. And then also parent that in a way that I would want to parent. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, I guess this is a long-winded answer, but 
once I kind of jumped off the cliff of Fake by Jenny, I remember beating myself up thinking like, oh my God, like, what have you done? Like, have you given up? Are you checking out on <laughs> what, you know, you're, still, like, you're, you're supposed to be doing as a, as a mother and as like a corporate person? Like, are you, is this what you're doing now? Like, what are you doing? And yeah. so I had to, cause there is sort of this image, right. Of like what that is. It's the supposed I, to. The supposed to's yes. And so it took me, it took me a while to, and it was very difficult because the easy part, the easy thing to do was to beat myself up about it and to go, you've already failed because you haven't made it in that yeah. world over there. And and I did do a little bit of that, but then it very quickly, you know, I had to understand and put my own self and worth and needs and wants ahead of whatever that crap was that I thought was the truth, right? And then once I kind of did that, then it was like, oh, that is just a bunch of crap. Like, who says that I couldn't? do this and, you know, make the same money that I was doing before, mm -hmm. um, yet get all these things back in mm -hmm. my tank that I need in order to be the person that I want to be and the parent that I want to be and yeah. the wife I want to be, right? Yeah. So that was probably the biggest hurdle for me, I would say. I think along the way. it's funny that you say it's the biggest hurdle for you. I would suggest that's probably a massive hurdle for anybody going into their second life, their second yeah. chapter, because yeah. it is. And I, I mean, just recently I had a conversation with somebody in the medical profession and she said the same thing. She said, I've always followed the goals. I yeah. always did what society suggested would empower yeah. me. And that I could have it all and I could have the kids and I could have a business and I could be a great wife and could be doing things that I enjoyed, like successful and sporty. And yeah. but I was also running myself into the ground doing it. Yeah. So whilst yeah. filling everybody else's checkbox, where yeah. did I fit into this? Yeah. So yeah. you're totally not alone. <laughs> yeah. It was me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty funny. So who have been um I mean, it sounds like your friend Marie was a catalyst at the beginning. Has yeah, anybody much, yeah. has anybody else been instrumental in helping you along the way? Because a business coach of mine once said, only you can do it, but you can't do it alone. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that is very true, actually. Um, so definitely my girlfriend Marie was a she was a massive catalyst. I'll, I'll never forget when I called her. <laughs> to say, um, you know, this is my plan. We're going to like, just jump off the cliff and, you know, go for it with Baked by Jenny. And, and at the time it was sort of the fall and I said, Oh, I'm going to plan to do this for the spring. And, and I remember her saying, why not now? Like, just do it now. <laughs> like, what are you waiting for? Right. Fantastic. And, yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> like, um, so that was, you know, like having that kind of an attitude, um, in my ear over the years and she, you know, and she calls me all the time and we still, you know, we brainstorm out stuff and she brainstorms stuff of her stuff with me and vice versa. And, you know, she's been, uh, really amazing on that front for sure. I'm trying to think, uh, you know, I have another girlfriend, Angie, who, um, she ran her own business um, for years and years. Um, this is again back sort of before, you know, iPhones and the internet or whatever. But she was a videographer and used to put together um, corporate videos um, mm -hmm. for big businesses and politicians and things like that. And uh, and she also was another um, lovely realist I think would be a great word to use along the way that I she would I would kind of check in with her and she would ask me how things were going or whatever and you know because I think there's a lot of stuff about small business that is reality that you know you just that nobody really talks about like you mm -hmm. could go a month or two months without making any money at all you know especially in the beginning mm -hmm. um 
And it doesn't mean that you're a failure. Yeah. You know, because on that third month, you could make more than you have in the last six months put together. So yeah. uh, that just as a very small example, that, like there were things like that, you know, that um, she was very helpful mm -hmm. to me and kind of normalizing as yeah. far as, you know, what that creating and building a small business includes um, and you, things you can expect along the way. It's interesting yeah. that you say that because have you ever seen that? Um... I guess it's the Facebook meme or internet meme or whatever, when they say, you know, the graph to progression and they say the expected graph to progression is that straight line. Yeah. And then actually yeah. the real life version is, you know, higgledy piggledy oh. all over the place, ups and downs, highs yeah. and lows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It looks and like that's a roller coaster. Reality. It is reality. Yeah. And I, you know, and again, I did not know that when I, um, <laughs> I was like, how, what do you mean? The line isn't straight. I like predictable. I don't, what do you mean? It's loopy. Like, no, I don't No, 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 no. Um, but again, it's just, you know, it's, you learn as you go. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I had to accept, I guess, was that when it comes to small business, the other thing that I found was that you're always up against your own ceiling. So at no point really is there, do you know it all? Like ever. No, so ever. there is ever. There, <laughs> ever. And I mean, life is kind of like that too, right? Mm. So, but like, you know, I was kind of like, what do you mean I have to go to, okay, I have to do something new again that is not within my control and I don't really know the outcome. And, you know, I mean, and it's, it's everything from, you know, like new dish dishes or meal concoctions that I would do or um, labeling systems or inventory systems or financial tracking things or you like the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, so learning to kind of accept that it's okay that you're never going to know it all um, and to trust that you have the skills and the resources around you to sort it out and it doesn't have to be perfect the first go around you know mm -hmm. generally it won't be um kind of thing but like you know over the years like you kind of build these layers right of like of things that and so it's like okay now i've done this so then i can move on to whatever this is or whatever that is or you know and then it uh, before you know it you sort of created this this entity yeah, you know, which is your business. So, I mean, I know that Mother's Day is uh, is coming up, and you know, you're asking me about COVID and and my emails and and all that. I remember last year, around this time, it was just such a dark time. You know, it was mm -hmm. again locked down, but it was all brand new. It was new huge people, unknown. That's the know, thing. It was brand new, oh, right? Huge, huge unknown. And uh, I remember like thinking okay, I need to do something positive. And it, mm -hmm. and, and it was just like, right, sort of off the cuff or whatever. And I thought, I wonder if I could pull together and do like a couple of small business contacts that I had, and put together something for Mother's Day for mm -hmm. people. And because at the time, you know, I was I wasn't really getting any calls, because I think everyone was sort of paralyzed in. Yeah this COVID thing is it was so new and whatever. I mean, people weren't calling me like, Hey, mm -hmm. can you send over like a big Mac and cheese for me and the kids like that? Yeah. It just wasn't happening. Right. So, yeah. and I needed the positivity and the, you know, cause one thing that I, that I do as a, a, a wonderful sort of therapeutic thing is that whenever I feel stuck or negative or whatever I, I I try to turn it around and and be generous or pay something forward to someone else oh cool um, that's a great habit yeah and and because it, it it's a win-win right so it really like, is I feel good and mm -hmm. I really it's not about getting the feedback of someone saying oh aren't you good it's not really about that mm. for me it's about getting outward of your own space yeah and uh, anyway, so I thought, well, if I collected a couple of different people and then the, the sum is greater than the parts mm -hmm. and then, but then everybody wins because, you know, like I'm going to support these other small businesses and then I make a little money. 
they all make a little money. And then, but now there's this really neat gift that people could have for Mother's Day. Yeah. Because of course there was no restaurants or pedicures or spas or whatever, like all of that yeah. was shut down as it is right now. Anyway, and so that was my kind of like pay it forward thing. Fantastic. And it was this like huge success. But in the moment, it was like, holy crap, like this is, I've never done this before. So what, <laughs> what's this supposed to look like? And I don't, do I need a card? Do I create the card? I can't go buy cards. So, you know, and anyway, so, and it ended up being this like lovely, very original project that in the end, of course, people loved and I offered to deliver. And so I delivered, you know, and then, but that made me feel good to like, you know, and a, a few of them were even surprise gifts for the recipient mom. So I'd show up at the door with this like thing and, you know, and they just were like blown away and just thought it was terrific. And so that's how I spent my mother's day last Fantastic. year, which was like really cool. Yeah, really. And, uh, but I do remember going through the, the exercise of like, oh my God, well, what is, packaging? What, how do I, and the, like, there were just so many questions because mm. I had never, you know, I'd never it done anything new. like that before. And then it was brand new. And then, but it was this big success. So this year was like, okay, like, let's rock this. Like, I, I know how to do this now. Right. So it was, you know, and this year uh, it's obviously like more organized um mm. and but i you know the volume i can do more of them and uh, again it's like it's a win win for everybody so and i think the unknowns like they just back to my my point you know they just they just are when you're running a small business i think you just are constantly having to do that yeah um and it's okay Mm -hmm. You just sort of have to trust that it's going to work itself out. You, know? you have to trust that you don't know the outcome and you have yes. to trust that you're actually going to survive whatever. Yes. Yeah. That's the difficult part. Now, yeah. because I'm aware of the time, but one thing that I'd love to ask you is you have given so much back to the community, mm -hmm. which judging by what you've said is, you know, really key criteria for helping you keep spirits up and, you know, staying motivated and positive. But yeah. what about the people that you hang out with when we're allowed to hang out, obviously? I was going to say, yeah. who are, who are yeah. those people? Who are those people? Because I, <laughs> I remember having a conversation with you, obviously, when we were allowed to be out in public about, you know, you'd really miss getting together with girlfriends. So how much, because we've all been tested on that, how much do you think that plays a part um, and having the girlfriends that you do and having the people around you, how much does that play a part outside of just family life? Because sometimes it, sometimes being a mum, a busy mum, and obviously, yeah. again, times are changing, but it can be quite a lonely business. Yes. Yeah. Like, how do you manage that? So um, probably, so I manage it on two fronts because I, I do find that dads slash husbands I don't know how this is but it just is that dads <laughs> slash husbands have a way of getting together much more impromptu and much more frequently than moms slash wives women I can't think about it too much because I probably have feelings about that somewhere in there but anyway it is that is <laughs> I'm not going to go right? to therapist mode and start <laughs> digging that's not fair that's not what today's about <laughs> But it, it, it is a thing. So, yeah. you know, what I, okay, so I, I do, I, I tackle this one on two fronts. So first of all, you know, I, I definitely have um, a small core group of very tight female friends. And we like the kind of friends that if you don't see each other in six months, um, it's like nothing ever happened kind of thing. And everybody downloads and we laugh and cry and it's perfect. Mm. So those, those gatherings were pretty, and they're all, we're all in the same cup from the same cloth, right? It's like, it's important, you know, even if it's one weekend a year, we're doing this and we're going to do this until we are old and gray and the end. Right. So like, 
So that's kind of one front that, Mm -hmm. um, that I have. Then the other front that I have is much more, or was anyway, before COVID, but it was much more structured where I, uh, on Tuesday nights, I played in a women's competitive volleyball league. And over the years, that was a group of women that I came to know um, and, you know, you could talk about stuff or talk about nothing mm-hmm. with, or giggle or joke around or, or say real things, you know, amongst sort of like, it was a very amazing camaraderie. And I, I, and it's interesting, you know, like before COVID, I don't, I, I took that kind of thing for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I would give anything because I see the value of what that really is. Yeah. And, but it's the structure. So like, no matter what I would go and do that and I would come home and my tank would be full of being amongst other women, other moms, you know, other wives, whatever it was, Mm -hmm. um, who are all sort of like-minded sporty running around feeling like a crazy person doing this and that. And, um, so, and then, but I had a couple of those, you know, I had a Friday morning um, strength class that I used to go to uh, locally here. That was a dozen women, we would all get together. And uh, it was actually, it was a, a personal trainer that she worked, uh, she recreated her, another small business owner, actually, mm-hmm. um, self-created person, um, Sandy, and uh, she created her whole basement into this studio, workout studio. Uh, and we would all gather and again, talk about like just the real stuff, right? Like yeah. of what, you know, um, and, uh, but that was like every Friday morning. So I would just, I would, okay. So I would look at my calendar and go, okay, this is Friday. So this is where I'm going. And I would go do that. Um, and I, Sunday nights, I played in a mom's hockey league locally too. Right. So I, you know, I, that was my other front where it was like, cause I need the social. Yeah. I definitely am a social. Well, you know that I, I need the social exchange. I think that's really important for people's um, sanity Yeah, and, and feeling connected to people, yeah. you know, um, is really important. I think as a, certainly as a mother, um, it's very easy to, get lost and get alone and be alone and because all you seem to be doing is you know parenting and Mm. cooking and emptying the dishwasher and doing laundry like it just it's yeah it's like never ending very functional very functional it can Mm. be if you let it right yeah um so that that's how i've kind of managed Mm -hmm. with it you know i'm during covid like i I don't find that more screen time is better. It, I, that doesn't satisfy me on a social level with yeah. friends. Like I would rather, and I have done some of this where, you know, you meet up with a buddy and, uh, you know, go for like a walk in the bush or whatever. Yeah. Like I would, uh, that, that I would rather do that less mm-hmm. than do screens more. Yeah. If that makes any yeah. sense. You know? Yeah. So something you said that was really interesting. You said about how you get together with the different groups of women with all the different activities. And as you say, you say what needs to be said and it can be really real. Yeah. And personally, I think one of the things I know certainly really throws me off balance is if you spend too much time on social media yeah. and people aren't always real. Yes. It's and fine. I understand that you celebrate the good stuff or you want to share a lovely family photo or whatever it may be. Yeah. However, there is no balance in that because you then lack actually I'm feeling really lonely or the other side of the coin, which we all feel. Yeah. So, I mean, that's certainly something that prompted doing this podcast Mm -hmm. was because within that space of community of women there is so much support to be real yes and that's why I've asked you about you know what were the tough parts and Mm -hmm. they don't discount from what is the good stuff that you've achieved 
Yeah. Because the good stuff is easy to recognize and the good stuff's easy to celebrate and easy to share. Yeah. It's the rocky road that takes you there. Yeah. That people aren't that keen to share very often out of yeah. context. Whereas yeah. you've shared that so truthfully and honestly, which I really appreciate. And mm -hmm. I really hope that whoever is listening today, that if there is something that they're just doing that they kind of take for granted, as you say, that you went, you're actually quite good at it and you're ending up doing it anyway. Well, mm -hmm. if you hate your day job, why not maybe take a step and say, well, actually that could be something. Not mm -hmm. it has to be, I mm -hmm. want it to be an empire or anything, but there is the seed that that has possibility of growing into something which might bring me more happiness. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I would say um, that because I do agree with you, I think that, you know, you see people trumpet the successes out there and, you know, oh, I've built this company and done this or whatever it is. Um, I would say I've come to realize that every change is rocky. Like there's no yeah. smooth anything when it comes to change. <laughs> and if it is smooth then there's something suspect because <laughs> it's like I really you know and I mean I I see I mean I I see it in my friends lives and you know any it's like even something as simple as you know selling your house and moving to a new house I mean it's moving is a crap show because mm. like it's because it's chaos and it's dealing with a lot of new and timing and different people and different place and, you know, all that kind of thing. No one ever says, you know, when you think about it, Oh, well, we just moved. <laughs> like it's, no, that's not actually what really happens. Right. <laughs> like <there's, laughs> it's yeah. days yeah. and weeks of stress and packing and unpacking and uh, downsizing and whatever, like whatever it is. Right. So um, I just think that, you know, I've come to realize that when, you know, whether it's life or small business or business in general or whatever it is, when there's change, like it, they're just, it is just is rocky and there just will be unknown. And I think, and the fact that that's okay. Yeah, you know? exactly. I think accepting that makes a world of difference, mm -hmm. you know, because then it's kind of like, okay, so if I'm not going to know, then that's fine. And like, let's just plow forward and figure it out and whatever right so yeah see how yeah. it rolls out yeah <laughs> for sure because it will roll out <laughs> yeah and I just you know and I do I, part of that I think when you accept things like that and realize that things the perfect is sort of in the imperfect I think mm -hmm. in some ways so it's like and being as authentic like kind of just keeps you closer to being an authentic person yeah and it's okay to feel like a crazy person some days and it's okay to feel like a superhero some days and it's okay to be in between some of that or somewhere in the middle of whatever on other days it just I don't know I think that to me is authentic and acknowledging that you know who you are and what what you know and what you're good at what you're not good at and then leading from all of that is there's power in that there is and, immense strength yeah, in it and strength and I know that when I am at my most grounded that I am at my most powerful mm -hmm. and so big by Jenny because it's been a, a way, it's been a way for me to have a more balanced lifestyle and it leaves space for all the things that kind of fill my tank and make me who I am. It's interesting. I do feel more personally, I feel stronger as a person mm -hmm. today than I did, you know, five years ago, for sure. Yeah, for sure. fantastic. You know, so. So, so yeah. cool. <laughs> Excellent. So I think that is a beautiful note to end on feeling stronger today than ever before. I yeah. love that. So if anybody is local um, or if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? 
So per, I would say through my website, which is www.bakedbyjenny.ca. Uh, and all my contact information is there. Uh, I'm also on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page there too. Um, but I wouldn't, yeah, definitely my website. I'm more of a, you know, call me on the phone or send me an email rather than, um, you know, social media. I, I've never really tackled social media in the way that I probably should. But See, there's a should I, for you. There's a should. I know. Yeah. Um, but you know what, to that degree, and you talked about my, my emails, you know, I do find that like, I haven't needed social media probably in the way I think that there is a myth there about social media. I'm not a hundred percent sold that you need social media in order to be successful um, in business. It's to, just another like, tool. It's just another tool. There's lots of other tools out there that you can use, right? Yeah. To connect with people. So yeah. Yeah. And yours has been the farmer's market. Yeah. And, and your emails. Yeah. So it's yeah, communication. Sure. It's totally communication. Yeah. For sure. Super cool. Which I think yeah. was actually originally the underlying premise of social media. Yeah, I think so. Right. <laughs> That's where it all um, started. <laughs> I know, but I do agree with you. Like, I think there is some of social media, like it is a wonderful powerful tool mm -hmm. but there is sometimes a distortion there that yeah I, I understand what you mean when you're it's talking true. about that yeah anyway so baked by jenny dot com yeah. or dot ca dot ca dot ca perfect okay so jenny thank you so much for mm. being on this being my first guest it's I know been, and it's been so lovely finding out <laughs> you know your story and how baked by jenny was started because yeah. I and my whole family have benefited from the results many, many, many times. You yeah. have saved many a family night dinner for me, which I, I truly appreciate. And I, love it. I hope that this Mother's Day goes really smoothly for your package that you've put together for this year. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm organized. I'm ready. <laughs> look at you go. Look at you go. That's I fantastic. <laughs> That's so cool. Thanks so much, Jen. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. It was an honor.